I grew up in apartheid in Cape Town. My parents were not rich, but they ensured that I went to a good school and to university. It was easy and open for me because I was white. As a teenager, I began to realize that others around me were not so fortunate. They were oppressed and deprived because their skin color was different. I became a journalist and wanted to change the world. And again, I was fortunate because of the brave and wonderful people I dealt with. I trusted them to tell me the truth. More importantly, they trusted me with information and thoughts, even at the risk of their own liberty. Albert Latuni, Nelson Mandela, Ernie Wenzel, Harold Strachan, Robert Sabuque, and innumerable others who were committed to freedom without any thought of any reward that they might get. Many of them became close friends. It's important to remember that whatever I did as a reporter to expose and denounce apartheid was only possible because of the support and protection of my esteemed editor, the late Lawrence Gander, who transformed journalism in this country, and his successor, Raymond Lowe, who still lives in Johannesburg. The Rand Daily Mail was too fiercely anti-apartheid for the nationalist government of the time and the business interests of the time, and we were closed down. I was unemployable and had little choice but to leave the country. Britain gave me sanctuary. I went to live in America for a while and finally I came to live in Israel. But I've gone on watching from afar, writing and speaking about events in South Africa. Happy that apartheid ended with freedom for everybody, sad that so many people still have their hopes and dreams of a better life unfulfilled. I am deeply appreciative of the high honor conferred on me by the president and the country. It helps to ease the pain of the fact that I was forced to leave South Africa those years ago. Thank you.